In 1945, the world was just beginning to understand the capabilities of nuclear power. Following Oppenheimer's creation of the atomic bomb, countries rushed to integrate nuclear technology into a seemingly endless opportunity of applications. A solution to creating vast amounts of energy, forming radioisotopes used in medical and agricultural applications, submarines that didn't need to be refueled for 20 years, and planes? With the growing threat of war between the US and Soviet Union, millions were invested to design a nuclear-powered plane that would give each country a seemingly unmatched military advantage over each other. Yet with such a plane's obvious advantages, unlike the nuclear arms or space race, the contest to build a nuclear-powered aircraft was one that never really concluded. Although there have been many intriguing concepts proposed over the years, Lockheed Martin's new compact fusion reactor is something that could potentially make nuclear-powered planes a reality in the future. So just why did the nuclear-powered aircraft never really take off? And is this all about to change? The idea of a nuclear-powered aircraft, in principle, is very promising. In the same way that nuclear technology is beginning to transform maritime travel, with various nuclear-powered submarines and aircraft carriers currently navigating the oceans without the need for diesel, so too could this technology transform flying. A conventional Boeing 747, for example, travelling from London to New York requires roughly 82,000 litres of fuel. Not only is this costly, but heavy, with this fuel cargo coming in at around 70,000 kilograms. More weight means that planes can travel less distance, requiring more fuel, further adding on more weight. Refueling quickly becomes a major issue, especially in the days of less efficient jet engines. This was the issue with the famous SR-71 Blackbird, whose ability to reach speeds of 3,500 km an hour and altitudes of up to 85,000 feet were limited by its excessive ability to burn through fuel thus limiting the flight time to less than 90 minutes. But imagine if a plane didn't have to refuel for theoretically years. In an era before large-scale in-flight refueling, the idea of having an aircraft capable of flying on a mission to anywhere in the world piqued the interest of the US Air Force. And in 1946, they launched a project called the Propulsion of Aircraft Project, whose goal was to do just this. This project was later replaced by the Aircraft Nuclear Propulsion Program, where in 1956 a General Electric J47 turbojet engine was modified to be powered by an experimental nuclear reactor. This modified engine, termed the HTRE, was successfully powered to near full thrust by its nuclear reactor in the lab. But there was just one problem with it. This engine used a system called the Direct Air Cycle, where air would enter the system, travel through a compressor and into the nuclear reactor. From there, it would heat up, enter and power the turbine of the engine, and eventually exit the vehicle through the exhaust. But this design meant that radioactive air from the reactor was spewed out of the exhaust system and into its surrounding area. Not exactly ideal. The project engineers tried to improve this issue by designing an engine with a separate cooling system. This series of projects called the Aircraft Reactor Experiment was the first time that a molten salt fuel was used in a nuclear reactor, and was a precursor to the much coveted molten salt reactors. But this experiment had its own problems, among which was an issue faced by all of these experiments. These engines were so heavy that they were never going to get off the ground when put in an aircraft. The need for radioactive shielding made from heavy materials such as lead was just another aspect that added to this issue. That's why in 1955, funding from the US Air Force was put towards modifying a Convair B-36 bomber to study the effects of radiation shielding when flying. To test this, engineers placed a 1 megawatt nuclear reactor inside the bomb bay of the aircraft, whilst designing a lead and rubber lined cabin for the crew. The aircraft, titled the Convair NB36H, 
was flown over remote areas of New Mexico and Texas, and had a radiation monitoring system dubbed Project Halitosis. Surprisingly, the experimental plane completed 47 test flights, in which it was concluded that the crew were not exposed to dangerous levels of radiation. But it was concluded that the prospect of a crash did leave open the possibility of a radioactive contamination event. The USSR also performed similar experiments, where a Tupolev Tu-95 bomber was fitted with a reactor to test the effects of radiation shielding. But in both cases, the aircraft was never actually powered by the nuclear reactor. This competition with the USSR was one of the key reasons why Congress actually wanted to accelerate the nuclear aircraft program. But in the end, things just didn't go the way of the nuclear aircraft. A major hiccup occurred in 1958, when the experimental HTRE-3 reactor experienced an excessive power surge caused by the spontaneous withdrawal of the reactor's control rods, actually leading to a meltdown event. Although the HTRE-3 reactor was repaired and later used again, the lack of tangible progress of the project, combined with the advances in intercontinental missiles and in-flight refueling systems, meant that the need for a dangerous and expensive nuclear-powered aircraft was diminishing. The final nail in the coffin was dealt in 1961, where a mere two months into John F. Kennedy's presidential reign, he cancelled the project stating that $1 billion and 15 years had been spent, yet there was still a very remote chance of developing such an aircraft in the near future. Since these projects, the appetite to build a nuclear-powered plane has been lacklustre, and nothing more has come about in the meantime apart from a few interesting concepts. But research carried out by Lockheed Martin could be about to change the game. Since 2010, Lockheed Martin has been working on creating a compact fusion reactor, running on nuclear fusion as opposed to nuclear fission. The project aims to replicate fusion reactions that occur at the centre of the sun, and contain this energy in a magnetic container designed to withstand extreme temperatures, and control the energy that's given off. So far, there have been several prototypes, including the latest T5 reactor, which will teach the engineers more about the viability of controlling such a reaction. But the project has the eventual goal of creating a reactor the size of a truck, which will create unlimited capabilities for its usage in vehicles like planes, which would theoretically have unlimited range, opening up the possibility for its usage in space travel. But Lockheed Martin's prototype reactor is just that, a prototype, with much progress to be made and an unknown timeline until completion. We may be waiting as much as decades more to see an operational fusion reactor. So whilst the nuclear powered plane is both terrifying and exciting, it's unlikely that we are going to be seeing this type of aeroplane flying around anytime soon. Thank you for watching Olive Strike Productions. If you enjoyed this video and want to see future videos on a wide range of topics covering energy, geopolitics and our world, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to be notified for future videos.